What's going on there, folks? Uh, good early Thursday morning, March 4th, 2021. It's a date, 9.15 a.m. West Coast time here in California. And, of course, pretty large earthquake striking off the coast uh, of New Zealand over there. Uh, pretty uh, large amount of aftershocks occurring as well. This is taking place uh, out in the ocean. Uh, we'll go ahead and check that out real quick and uh, look at a couple more details of uh, what's going on out there. There's the uh, latest on the USGS map. Now, I did get a notification that there was a 6.9 prior to this 7.3 that struck out there uh, northeast of the New Zealand or uh, the North Island region. But um, I don't believe there was uh, two earthquakes, at least according to the USGS and the GeoNet uh, maps here. It looks like that was only officially <clears throat> one earthquake, um, and that was the uh, 7.3 that struck. You know, it's potentially it got uh, upgraded. These guys here on the GeoNet features or Vionet, uh, GeoNet website has the uh, earthquake at a 7.1 uh, depth of about 90 kilometers or so. Uh, and the USGS here has the earthquake at a 7.3, uh, about 20 kilometers down. So a uh, pretty good difference in uh, estimates there. This is within that subduction area called the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone. It does sit off here off the coast, uh, southeast, east area. Uh, kind of a major player when it comes to some mega quakes out there. Uh, of course, the depth on this one here being only 20 kilometers is kind of questionable. I believe it's a little bit more deeper, even though it does show that it's been reviewed by a seismologist here. We'll see if they... Uh, uh, update this or not of course looking at historical seismic activity no doubt shows regular earthquakes on a uh, common basis out there northeast of uh, the uh, mainland there new zealand and uh you can take in, taking it back here shows a large amount of earthquakes that can take place in this region but the hikarangi subduction zone is a major area where uh, no doubt we can see some much much larger quakes than this 7.3 that struck um, I did put out a video specifically on this Hikarangi subduction zone. Oh, I, probably a month or so ago now, probably a couple months ago. Uh, so you'd have to search the channel to uh, lear, uh, learn a little bit more about this Hikarangi subduction zone area. And it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty dangerous area when it comes to uh, producing major earthquakes. There, I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of these uh, of these pages, but it's well worth reading. If you uh, if you have some extra time this morning, it does extend off the coast uh, from the north part. I'm trying to find a, a pretty good picture, but these guys, well, this kind of shows you the cut overview layout of it uh, with the Pacific plate up here to the north. That would be the north, I believe. Um, no, let's see which way we're facing here. Okay, that would be the north. Um, so yeah, you got the subduction of the Pacific Plate underneath the Australian Plate, uh, producing that major area of seismic risk out there and tsunami risk as well. Uh, definitely not fear mongering, but uh, what well, I do not want to see any more of that. Come on. Um, but it's uh, definitely something to keep note and uh, be on guard about. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'm trying to find a, a better picture. I know I had a couple at one point. Uh, <clears throat> they call it the subduction margin. Also, it's you know the subduction zone. Definitely, a, definitely a very dangerous area when it comes to some major quakes, folks. Let's see if this one's going to let me kick it up here. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's a little one. Here's a little bit overview uh, of the uh, subduction area. Of course, the deep ones are very, the deep earthquakes are very similar uh, to what we see in any subduction area, right? There's uh, areas that get stuck. There's areas of slow slip in this area as well. Uh, down dip, downstream, similar to the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. But there's the locked area that does sit offshore too that uh, is very capable of producing some major major quakes out there uh, and as I mentioned much higher I'm just not able to find a 
the map that I want. I should have downloaded it, but uh, I can't find it now. Uh, let's see if this is a... No, that's not what I want. Oh my gosh. Okay. Either way, folks, um, look it up. I explain it a little bit more. I got some better detailed maps on the Hikarangi subduction zone that sits off the coast there of, of New Zealand. Uh, it's worth the watch there on this channel. If you get a chance, quite a few folks did report feeling that in Auckland region. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly there, New Zealanders. Uh, did you feel it responses there? You can see uh, quite a few folks uh, did report some very strong shaking. And the, uh, as far as the intensity map goes, uh, I can see at least uh, according to the community internet uh, intensity map, these are reports being uh, generated by folks uh, reporting it. Shows some strong, very strong shaking with most of the region um, receiving uh, some light to moderate shaking throughout the land there. Uh, so yeah, it definitely a pretty good sized quake out there. Uh, there is a couple, uh, well, a little short tectonic summary of that earthquake. Uh, we'll go ahead and read just a little bit of it real quick. Um, of course, 7.3 earthquake, 20 kilometers depth near the plate boundary between the Pacific and the Australian plates. Um, preliminary moment sensor solutions indicate that the earthquake likely occurred on either a northeast dipping reverse fault uh, with oblique right lateral strike slip motion or on a southeast dipping reverse fault. Um, the Pacific Plate begins its westward subduction beneath the Australian Plate at the uh, Kermadec and Hikarangi subduction zone trenches with a velocity of about 47 mm a year. The location, the depth, and the faulting mechaniz mechanisms associated with this earthquake indicate that the earthquake likely occurred within the subducted Pacific lithosphere very close to the oceanic trench between the two uh, Pacific Plates. So definitely within that uh, <clears throat> subduction region. Uh, let's see here. Within 250 kilometers of the March 4, 2021 event, four earthquakes of M7 or greater have occurred in the past century. <clears throat> um, yeah, so they don't really talk too much about the potential danger and hazard of the Hikarangi subduction zone there, but uh, it's there, and it's best to be on guard. And, uh, of course, you know, just like uh, the folks here along the West Coast of California and the uh, Pacific Northwest and the Washington and Oregon, definitely uh, have an earthquake plan, be on guard. You know, sometimes it's not that major shaking that can get you. It's the uh, resulting tsunami uh, that could take place from a subduction zone earthquake. Now, there was a sub, um, tsunami statement issued, but I don't believe we've seen any um, um, any tsunami there. <clears throat> of course, the latest message, this, you know, this happened well over an hour ago, almost two hours ago now that this earthquake took place. Um, Looks like maybe, maybe small, very small levels in, in uh, <clears throat> seafloor changes were measured. Let me get some water here. I'm just uh, extremely dry and felt, uh, felt a little bit of fatigue kicking in here <clears throat> past couple days. So I hope I'm not getting sick again. <clears throat> kind of feels like it. So I'm trying to push my way through this. Um, so yeah, just some very small sea level changes that took place there in the uh, uh, in that region there. But uh, let me go back. I wasn't off of that map yet. Where'd it go? Okay. Um, let's see what else they got here. Yeah, the first one came out. Uh, said that there could be some hazardous waves possible within... Oh, about 300 mile, 300 kilometers of the coast. Luckily, that did not pan out, at least according to uh, um, all the data being received here. Uh, so yeah, let's go back here and check out the uh, um, 
where am I at here? <laughs> Can you tell I haven't had any caffeine? Um, <clears throat> check out that 6.1 right there. Looks like that just occurred. Just occurred. I'll check out. I'm going to go back here real quick to the Earthquake 3D program real quick and show you guys a, a bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, it's a major movement going on along the western uh, plate, no doubt, right? That you know, this Pacific plate here, southwestern part. I guess you could consider the Pacific plate here where this uh, earthquake took place. Now we're seeing that 6.1 up north, and now some movement along the west coast. So we've seen a 3.2 just north of the Bay Area. Um, in between this time I started this video and that uh, the time that that 7.3 struck there and now we got a 3.0 on the southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone there off the coast of Eureka California following that 6.0 that just struck um, west of Fiji near looks like uh, Vanuatu <laughs> gosh darn it I'm probably pronouncing it wrong again uh, Vanuatu, right? Is that right? Vanuatu. It's kind of sticking in my head. But either... Oh, man. I tell you what. It could be a very, very interesting day here with all this major movement taking place, including the West Coast. Hold on a second here, folks. Let me jump back over here. Uh, Vanuatu, right? 6.1 deep earthquake. 172 kilometers uh, down below the surface. Let's see what all we've gotten. See what all has taken place since that 7.3. Quite a few aftershocks, folks. Of course, the GeoNet servers showed quite a bit on there as well. The USGS map showing uh, a good handful with the largest. Looks like it's a 5.4. Looks like a 5.4. But as always, folks, we could see a much stronger. Uh, quake within a given time if you really think about it look how this is kind of back building main quake taking place over here on the western part here of this plate interface right uh, right around the Hikurangi tr uh, trough right there but this is kind of still within that subduction zone there at the north end this kind of back building off here to the uh, to the east as these aftershocks are continuing, about 50 kilometer separation difference there, indicating, uh, well, I'd definitely be on guard for uh, potential further movement here in this region. Not, not only a stronger aftershock, but potentially, potentially, um, there's always that given within about a 24 hour period or so of a larger quake than the uh, 7.3. Just be on guard, especially with all this movement taking place now, 6.1 up here. Of course, we can kind of look at the motion of the plates in a way. If you get motion here with the subduction zone, dipping underneath the uh, the Australian plate here. Um, of course, we could see, and we are seeing, uh, some buildup of pressure up here to the north. But uh, that doesn't uh, mean that all the other areas over here to the east are in the clear. It looks as though things are picking up um, with this major movement. There's that 3.2 that struck near... St. Helena, California, north of the bay. This is kind of inland, north of Napa. Not for sure what uh, fault system this is taking place on. Kind of in a, uh, a mountainous area. But of course that 3.0 up here off the coast of Eureka in the Mendocino Triple Point Junction. 20 kilometers, somewhat deep for this area. Uh, so this is something to watch here. I don't think today is a good earthquake day for me if to get the uh, to get the major quake out here. On the west coast i guess i'm prepared for the most part I'm, i always try to prepare i'm kind of a prepper i'm kind of a prepper guy i got uh a lot more stuff stocked up than most people would would assume so i'm kind of ready i guess but you never know folks um you know it's good to be on guard when we're seeing some heightened times like today obviously um there's a lot of new zealander folks here um, on this channel that uh, are regular viewers so I would appreciate if you could some input on what this earthquake felt like of course it was a ways away from Auckland um, but it was felt throughout the land here 
7.3 earthquake will definitely do that. Let me know if uh, you felt some rolling, jolting, and how close you are to the epicenter. I'd like to get some uh, some info from the Gisborne region down here uh, and other areas that may be uh, a little bit closer to that 7.3 that struck. So let me know what you felt, how long it lasted. Uh, definitely appreciate that. Of course, uh, we'll be on the station here monitoring for the most part throughout the day today and uh, doing updates regular on any more potential further movement. Uh, once again, the Hikarangi subduction zone is something you should check out, be aware of, especially if you live out there. It's a major player, folks, in the area of uh, New Zealand. You know, a lot of folks I'm sure know about it. They may have been taught about it in school out there. Uh, and then again, a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people here in the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California, you talk to them about the Cascadia subduction zone. What's that? What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> That's going to be a, a doomsday scenario for folks that live along the coast. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to be informed, be on guard and be ready and be prepared is the main thing. Uh, and the folks there in New Zealand definitely want to uh, study up on the Hikurangi subduction zone and its history and its future, uh, which you know, pretty much stretches along that eastern part of the coast there and down in, uh, into the uh, southern part of the region. All right, folks, um, we're going to jump off here, kind of monitor the station, as I mentioned, and we will be back a little bit later on with, uh, of course, a further update later on this evening. I'm going to find some day quill if I can somewhere around here and get my brain working and my body fighting whatever's going on, and I will be back a little bit later on. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>